Hello and welcome back to M Code. So in the previous lectures, we have seen all about the cipher pattern. We have seen what is a node pattern and the relationship patterns. But let's talk about the cipher values and the different types that are available in cipher. So without further ado, let's get into it. So this will be a very short lecture because here we are just going only going to see what really are the types and different values in the cipher which is present. So basically cipher will provide you a range of different data types as well as the data values. So when writing your cipher query, it is like not possible to like declare a data type. In the previous lecture, we have seen that while writing a query, we have not declared any specific data type while returning any data. And here cipher is automatically inferring the schema types based on the given values. So if we given like the integer value, then it infers to as an integer or else if we give us like the string value in the quotes, then it will consider it as a string. So basically it infers the schema as per the data input that we provide. Let's talk about it in more detail. So like basically the cipher will provide you a first class support for number of data value types. So these are basically converted into three categories and they are like property, structural, as well as the constructed values. Let's talk about them in detail. So as you already know that the property types, so as the name suggests, a property type value is nothing but can be stored as a node or a relationship property. So as we have seen earlier, a node which is nothing but a record in a graph database can contains different set of properties and like properties we can say it as a key and it stores some value so they are basically the key value pairs in your graph and similar kind of structure can be there on the relationship as well and you can have like multiple properties present on your relationship so these are like different following data types which are included in the property type category. So basically there are like boolean. So boolean means the true or false value can also be there on a property of node or the relationship. And similarly, we can have like multiple types of different types like the date. So we can use the date to convert a string into date as well. That also we are going to see. Also we have the duration which is very useful to work with a time series data. Then we have the float. So if you are familiar with any of the programming languages, you will know what really is a float, the difference between float and integer. Then comes the list. So list is pretty common in any programming language like the Python as well. Then we have the local date time as well as the local time and point for handling the spatial data as well as we have the string which is the most common data type out there in the data community then we have the zone date time and the zone time so these are nothing but a specialized data types by which you can store the value in the property graph so property graph means the graph will have different nodes and nodes will have different properties as well as the relationship can also have some properties so that's nothing but a property graph so let's talk about some of the most common data types which we are going to use in this whole series so basically let's say if you want to create a node so let's say we want to create a node and the name the name of the node is just like we will create a test node so the, this test node will nothing but have some properties so it will have like the name so as you already know that name will be there in the string data type so for defining a string you can directly give it as a quotation so inside quotation you will be giving the value so in this case it is like the john as well as we can give like multiple properties during the creation so here the next property we will take it as the age so basically as you already know that it should be a number so basically the number means that it should be present in an integer format so you don't have to declare any data type here just give the value as an integer and not a string so let's say it has the age 27 so next one is nothing but a salary so salary could be nothing but present in float as well so to be able to do that you just give the value as a float so let's say it is nothing but like 1000.10 so this is how you can use the different data types in cipher and let's say if we just return this node 
as you can see it has created the node with the label test and as you can see if you hover on to the property as you can see it is stored already in the integer the next one is stored as a string and the next one is like the float so similarly the cipher can infer the schema by which you have given any sorts of values while creation of the nodes or setting some properties to the nodes okay so the next one is nothing but the structural types so structural types are nothing but like the different entities that are present in your graph so basically those are nothing but categorizing to three categories so the first one is the node the relationship as well as the path so basically the node as you already know that it is nothing but as acts as a vertices in our graph then you got the edges which is nothing but the relationship and the path so as you already know this is just like a schema or the structure of the graph but they are also the different data types in our graph so basically the node data type will include the id of the node then the labels on the node which is nothing but like the actor or the person and the id so id is nothing but as a unique identifier to every node which is generated by neo4j itself you don't have to provide it it is generated by neo4j itself so if we just go into the graph as you can see all nodes so if you go inside like let's click on actor so inside actor you will see the unique identifier present for each node and you can access it using the id function so you can just filter your nodes based on the different ids you want to work with and then comes the map of the properties so as you already know that node can contain different set of properties which are nothing but the key value pairs those are nothing but the type of the node then you got a relationship type which also includes the id which is again a unique identifier then comes the relationship type so as you can see in our graph if we just click on this acted in is nothing but the relationship type which is there between the actor as well as the movie and it also have the start node id and the end node id so if you go into the graph again the start node id will be 9836 and the end node will be the 4931 so this information or you can say it as a type of the different types of a relationship and at last we have the path so this path data type is nothing but the alternating sequences of node and relationship let me show you how to represent a path so let's say if you want to traverse a graph with some nodes and relationship so let's say if we have a actor then comes the relationship type which could be like acted in and at the last as you already know the direction will be to the movie so the path will be nothing but the sequential pattern of the node and relationship so if you define this match clause into a path you can just give like p here p is equal to or you can give like any variable so this will store this pattern and if you just want to return the whole path you can just return the p and it will give you like the whole thing and there you go you got some values so this is how you can define a path in the neo4j using cipher and at last we have the constructed types so basically the constructed types are nothing but the list as well as the map in neo4j or we can say the cipher so list and map you already know if you are familiar with the different programming languages so there are like different several constructed types like the list tuple so here also we have the list as well as that map the list data type can be either the homogenized collection of the simple values so it could contain the string values or the integer values or it could be like heterogeneous which is nothing but the order collection of values and in if we talk about the map the map data type is nothing but the heterogeneous which conclude which contains like the unordered collection of key value pairs so basically map you can call it as a dictionary where we are storing the data as a key value pair or similar to the json format so these are nothing but the constructed types we are going to have a separate lecture on all these complex types like the list the map as well as the different such things like path as well as the special functions as well as the date type functions so this was just like a introductory part to all this stuff and at last we have like different types so basically that this below table will show you the different types present in cipher so this type can be used 
in the type predicate expressions as well as in node and the relationship property type constraints so basically we have like these types we have the any we have the boolean date duration so we talked about them in the previous topics as well so these and also we have the advanced type like the zone type time the zone time so there are like different types present in cipher that we are going to see in the subsequent lectures so i hope you understood what really are the different data types which are available as well as their categorization in detail so i'll see you in the next one